Hello folks, if you want to learn that pentatonic lick, which is really easy, it's a cycling lick, and to understand the fundamentals of the pentatonic scale, then this is the video for you. So what we're going to do over the next few weeks is to work solely with the A minor pentatonic scale. So if you're new to the pentatonic scale or you're not quite familiar with the theory side of it and you want to understand how to incorporate it into your playing, plus in every position that I'm going to show you, you will get um, a lick to use in that position, which we can then tie them all together, marry them all up, play them over backing tracks and create these great monster guitar god licks, then this is going to help you out massively. So we're going to take a little look at the um, basics of what the pentatonic, the minor pentatonic scale is all about. So before we do, just subscribe to the channel and give that bell a little bit of a, a ding and that will keep you up to date with all the latest um, videos for the pentatonic phrasing and licks and exercises that we're going to be covering over the next few weeks, okay? So right. The A minor pentatonic, what's it all about? Well, if we go as simple as we possibly can with this and we just start on the notes. If, for those of you that don't know, we've got, only got so many notes of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That gives us seven notes. It's the A natural minor scale, okay? So make a note, that's the A natural minor scale. Once again, it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so we're going to take the second note and the sixth note away from the A natural minor scale. So if I play the A natural minor scale all together, we get A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so it's a, a very popular scale. I use the A natural minor scale all the time. And all we do when we turn the A natural minor scale into an A minor pentatonic, we just take the second, which is the B, and then we take the F, the sixth note, away. So we take the second and the sixth notes, which leaves us with A, C, D, E, and G. A, C, D, E, G. Then we just repeat that across the strings. A, C, D, E, G. A, C. So it gives us two notes on each string. Um, and the pattern all together is like this, 5-8, 5-7, 5-7, 5-8, 5-7, 5-8, 5-7, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8, 5-8
Now the other thing, if you're going to practice bends, if you want to practice and make sure that you go into the correct pitch with your bends, I would recommend that you actually go up two frets. So I'll go up to the ninth fret. That's a full tone, and that's the tone that we're going to try and hit with the bend. So when we go to that seventh fret, that's what we want. So if you do this, you can practice and train your ears a little bit to get those bends right. If you do, you know you've overbent. If you do this, you know you've underbent. So it's going to train your ears, it's something that I would recommend practicing and you can also incorporate that into a lot of other licks where if you want to practice a half bend, you're literally just going to go up. full bend again. So it doesn't matter where you practice your bends, if you go two frets higher, you'll start to know when you hit that pitch. And that's a great little tip for you there. So that's something that you can work on. So we're just going to bend this seventh fret of the G string. It's going to be a full bend, okay? Then when we get to the top, you're going to choke the bend like that. And then you're going to make a partial bar on the 5th fret of the B and the E strings. And you're going to play those like that. Now watch my left hand, watch what my finger does. I relax the pressure after the first note and then back on for the second. The reason why it gives me this. If I keep the pressure on we get this. So that's what we don't want. We want to make sure that we've got those two notes as separate. The more staccato, which is short and detached, rather than legato, which is smoother and as one note goes into another. So if we bend that first note up from that, uh, that, that seventh fret of the third string, and then we play the next two with the staccato effect, we get this. So that's the first bit that I would practice, where you just damp the note. So get your get your full tone bend under your fingers first, and then break it down into two little separate bits. It's better to learn something in a small section, in a small chunk, to try and learn the whole thing over and over. Get each individual step right, and then put it together. So you'll end up with this kind of thing. Now that's not a bad lick in its own because if you build some speed up with that you get the last bit that we need to add after the is the eighth fret. Now I use my third finger for this on the on the second string, the eighth fret, the second string, and then I pull off from the eighth fret to the fifth fret. So if you look at this, we're following those notes in that pentatonic box shape that we've got. Okay, so if I put the whole phrase together slowly, now when I pull off with the uh, when I pull off with the uh, third finger of the eighth note, uh, eighth fret, sorry, on the B string, I actually pull down. I don't just lift the finger up. I'm literally. You can see what's going on there. So that's like a finger picking that, it's like a little fret there, you know, a pick on that fret there going, my finger is actually creating the actual movement of the string to make it resonate and sound out for that, so. So see how we get that kind of effect, that's what gives you the volume on the note, okay? So if I put all that together slowly again, See how it leads into other little licks and phrases. It's, so now you've got your first position. Now before you probably want to get into the licks, I would spend a couple of nights, maybe 10, 15 minutes for two nights, just drilling that, that pattern in. Two notes on each string. Because 
because you really need to know these shapes, really get them stuck in there, really locked into your, into your mind and under your fingers before you really move on. Because again, the next lesson is going to be in the second position of this pentatonic uh, key, the A minor pentatonic, and we're going to be showing you that. So if you're going to have to keep going back and referring to the first shape and then the second shape and the third, you're going to struggle with this. So spend two or three nights, take your time, you know, it's, it's doable in a week, this lick is. Um, if you spend a little bit of time each day on it, but I would recommend maybe 15 minutes of practice for two or three nights Just drill that into your fingers Starting on that A note there, fifth breath Now don't fall into the trap that most people do when I'm dealing with oof, when I'm dealing with the students in the studio all the time, one-to-one -one lessons, I tend to find that everybody under practices. So this is why I'm going to try and help you along with the practice time of this. You know, stick to 15 minutes of the scale on its own. And because you might think, oh, I know that after two or three minutes, but it's getting the muscle memory. You need to retain that. And that comes from repetition, repetition, repetition over several nights, several days, etc. So that's the most important bit. Build, it's teaching you to learn to practice the correct way as well, because we all think we've got it learned. But trust me, we haven't. We've got to go deeper and deeper and longer to make sure that these things are actually retained. You know, it's only like when you learn to walk, you don't just walk and then within two minutes you're walking and jogging and running. It takes you, when you're a little toddler, a few days to get good at it. It's that repetition over a period of time that works. That's the most important thing. So you have to know pattern one before we can move on to pattern two and the lick of pattern one as well, okay? So it's very doable, we can all do this. There's no secret to any of this, it's just having the patience and having the correct mindset to go over and over and over as accurately as is possible. So always remember this next bit that I'm gonna to say to you. Only ever practice at the speed that you can play it perfectly. So if you're playing it and you're making mistakes, you're probably playing it too fast. There's no shame in going slow. Really slow it right down. Make sure that you eliminate all the errors yourself because if you've got all sorts of things going on, like if we go back to the, the, the sort of little bar over the first and second strings, if I go, it's me that's making the mistake. So you have to stop that yourself. You have to be able to go, do you know what? I'm not fretting that right or there's something not quite wrong. I'm mispicking the string or I've not, you know, I'm, I'm letting the two strings ring together. You have to analyze what you're playing, stop the mistakes, and then you'll find that you'll get cleaner and better and more accurate with your, with your uh, playing abilities, okay? If you fancy having a, an online guitar lesson with me, then check out the website, or you can contact me through the YouTube page or on Facebook. Um, I'm also over Instagram as well. It's on all the socials, so just drop me a message and we'll sort something out. And I do the lessons over Zoom and Skype, send you all the material that you need and loads of backup as well, and it's great. Uh, I do quite a lot of them, and, and it works well for people from all over the world, and all over the world in this country, if that makes sense. So that's the kind of stuff that I tend to do a lot with the guitar playing. Um, so yes, so please stick uh, with this. You're gonna love this if you're a beginner to the pentatonic scale. It's gonna help you out massively. Next lesson is gonna be uh, the second position, and we're gonna have a, a new lick for you to practice in that second position as well. So for me, Chris, check out all the socials, stay safe, Stay well, keep up this practice of this pentatonic stuff. We're going to love this journey together and uh, keep on rocking in the free world. Take care and I'll see you soon.